Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast. Got one of our beef fries back on the show today. Rob O'Neill is here. How are you, buddy? Hello, I'm good. I appreciate you guys calling me. You don't age, dude. Every time I see I appreciate you. It. Yes. I feel like shit. I had a big weekend um, at Kid Rock's house, and I feel like shit, but, um, you know, thank you. Yeah. Is that where you went for the Super Bowl? Yeah, we, he's got a he's got a joint down in Alabama, so we go there and uh, it's like it's like a, he's always said you don't need anything bigger than a double wide. So you go to the double wide, hang on the garage, uh, boil some crawfish, have a bunch of beers, and and uh, watch football. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Kind yeah. of tough to get to a little destination. It's a uh, lower Alabama, but it's uh, definitely worth it. Great people down there. They 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 know how to live life mm-hmm. the right speed. Like like you know, tied people that can live off the land. I could get up at four in the morning, or I could not. Doesn't matter. Yeah, is, is it Gulf Shores? Gulf Shores is that what it is? <laughs> Uh, do, do, uh, no, we flew into Montgomery and then we're about 45 minutes away from there. So it's hmm. not really a, a town anywhere there. Is that near where Clay lives? No. So he lives in Clay, Alabama, which is kind of near. Oh, that's a little farther north. Yeah. yeah. Uh, kind of near like Birmingham. I, I was it's still in the middle of goddamn nowhere, though. Birmingham. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and it's great. And like, dude, he's one of those people because like, you know, he's my best friend. He lives in Alabama. He's the um, same way. He just stays out there, smokes weed, and writes all the time. It's hangs it. out with his family. Uh, and he, he has, like, a fully operational yeah. farm that he, you know, uses as, like, food and vegetables mm-hmm. and fishing and all that stuff. And he really does live that life. But you're right. That's Alabama where, shit, man, I, I, he, I don't even know if he knew COVID was going on, to be honest with you, because his life did not change. Yeah. That sounds about right, too. And it's the same with the, that's the same they were down there. And, every, you know, everyone's cool, but, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot, you know, in between going between Nashville and New York and New York mm. City, just get, getting out amongst it with the, with the locals is just a great time. So yeah. we had fun. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It, is, it is nice to get away from time to time. I mean, Jesus Christ. That, yeah. This is like running a marathon. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, at the end of the, every day, I'm just, like, exhausted from running my fucking dumb mouth. <laughs> how, many, how many are you doing a day? Well, we're, I mean... I, you typically Two shows probably yeah. a day something like that it depends on the day sometimes it's just one but sometimes it's three or four yeah. like today's three uh yeah. we're doing a super bowl wrap-up oh. show today um speaking of which uh, you, you watched the big game obviously uh mm-hmm. did you have money on tampa bay i was the only one who picked tampa bay here oh wait before we get into that Georgia. did you have did you have ray care at, down there in alabama with you no ray cares dri- he's driving across the country i talked to him and i think he was in phoenix or tucson and he drove into san diego What's and he, then he was out there, but he, he, yeah. is he just doing push-ups and burpees across the country or what? Because that's really starting to piss that, me that off. Dude, that dude, the best way that I heard him described is his abs have abs. Like yeah. he's a freak. He's he's really and, starting and to it, piss me off. Yeah, well, it's one of those dudes like that. You, you try to tell him like them being his his base, his fans. Like you you can't work out like this. Like this will hurt you. <laughs> yeah. Like he he's a, a couple other guys out there can do it, but I I can't do that shit. Oh no. You know I'm. <laughs> yeah, my pull-up game's gone down since like, well, I you know I'm pushing 44 or something now. So, yeah. I mean, it's like you expect. Well, I mean, but, Tom, speaking of 44, Tom Brady's going to be 44 soon, and he looks like he's 25 yeah. goddamn years old still. It's crazy. I, look, yeah. it, that he's the only person I would actually consider, like, maybe going vegan for that it looks like it works. Um, it looks like it works. It does. I mean, it's, everyone it's, else. It's, if you're he able, was so cool. Go ahead, Rob. Before the game, he said, uh, he said, I still feel like, you know, I'm 43, but – I still feel like the high school kid in the locker room. I got to go play football with my friends. Like that's yeah. just his attitude. The fact that Giselle doesn't let him eat anything except like peppers or whatever. <laughs> but is that her or him? Is is the question that I have because I I I heard behind the scenes, his regimen is so gnarly that it's uh, he's got this group of trainers that roll with him everywhere. That was part of the split with the Patriots was um, they were not happy that uh, he wanted his trainer in the locker yeah. room. Uh, in the, they in actually the, in booted the, the guy room. out after a while, right? Yeah, they kicked him off the premises. And that and was then, pretty much the end of Tom Brady in New England. Well, the other part of this was the TB12 diet. Yeah. So he was getting other players on it, and then they were complaining that those guys were getting injured because it was all vegan and you know they weren't having enough protein in their diet and all that yeah. other stuff. Well, clearly it's working for Tom Brady. For him, but that's that's not – he's probably not the best example. Like, we, we know from uh, – relatively recent interviews over the last year or so that Russell Wilson spends about $3 million on his diet regimen per year, right? Yeah. What do you think Tom Brady's spending on his? Frankly, it's got to be more than that, you would yeah. think, right? Yeah. Because to be, to be able to source 
quality proteins like that in, in the vegan community is not the easiest thing to do, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. You, gotta, you really have to be on it all the time. But he's like that. We, I don't remember who it was that we interviewed. It was, uh, you know what, it was either one of his friends you know or a journalist. Funny, and it was like, about, uh, you, ever, you ever notice about vegans? Or just, a, just a little side note. Like they always hate people that eat meat, but we rarely hate vegans. No one like, cares really about care. vegans. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I don't care about a vegan. I don't think about vegans. The only time I think about it is every single Super Bowl. When Tom Brady's in it, and I'm like, oh, shit, he's a vegan, dude, and he looks like he's four years old. Well, let's talk about the game because, uh, you know, it was either a really good game or a really bad one, depending on where you were in financially invested, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we saw the full gamut of emotions here in our studio. One yeah. guy was losing his mind. He was also losing his mind for very different reasons. Yeah, I bet I went all in on the Bucks and, and bet all in on the Bucks. Everybody else bet the Chiefs. Did you? Do you have money on the game? Like when you're partying no, with Kid Rock? I didn't Rock. have money on the game because I, I I was pulling for the Bucks. I really thought that you're not going to be Brady at home. Mm. But I've had a tendency. I don't know if you follow me on Twitter. Every bet I've made for the last six years, I've lost. Like we're talking everything from UFC to fucking bowling. I don't win, so. I don't try to jinx it when I really want something to happen. I played in a few pools. I, I did. I think I did okay, but I'm not sure. But I didn't put money on it. But I was saying Brady. That and the fact that you know you got Jason Pierre Paul and the Dominican two up there against a backup lineman. Like yeah. they're going to get a pass rush on him. I, don't, I mean, I don't care how good you are, Mahomes. You're not going to get away from it. And then you knew that um, Gronkowski is going to show up because that's his jam. That's mm-hmm. what they do. They win Super Bowls, and he got two. What was he calling two tutties? Yeah. <laughs> two tutties, dude. You got two tutties. I, 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 I had really, money on him. I yeah. had money on him. It was 50 to 1 on Gronkowski to be in the MVP. Yeah, yeah. As and he well. should have, to be honest. He should have won it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I'll, let me ask you this, Rob. You're a huge football fan. I feel like two receiving touchdowns is more impressive than three passing touchdowns, right? Well, yeah, as a tight end, too. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, Gronkowski is a little different. Same with Kelsey from, from Kansas City. But yeah. if, uh, um, if you're catching the, I mean, you're, okay, you're in the, obviously in the red zone. But uh, tight ends aren't getting targeted as much as receivers. Right? Right. And a guy with like Brady, he can he can, yeah. he can you know snap out a dart at sixty yeah. yards. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, having him do that and just the comeback that he did, he was waiting for Brady. Like he retired, but that was all bullshit. Waiting for Brady to make a move out of New England. Yeah. And I think something with Gronk because he likes to party, doesn't like the cold very much. He wanted to go to Florida. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's the thing. Anytime they're not in the playoffs or not in the Super Bowl, he and his brothers all have like this flag football thing down in Miami every year. Whenever they're, mm-hmm. whenever Gronk's not Gronk Beach, right? yeah. yeah, Gronk Beach. Yeah, I mean, we were gonna go this year, but. You know, COVID. obviously, instead, yeah. well, in addition to COVID, he also won the Super Bowl, so there was not going to be a big party. <laughs> like Chris, his brother that we know that we're friends with is was in the. Uh, Chris is awesome, yeah, great guy. He, I love that guy. He's so fucking funny. Uh, he was on the field right after the game. Yeah, he was yeah. there at the game, so there was not going to be any of that stuff down there. No shenanigans this year. I'm yeah. looking forward to getting out of all this bullshit and going back to the stadiums. Because yeah. um, you're a stadium guy, so you like to go and see it in person. Yeah, I like to get in, especially Miami. We used to go to. Uh, Miami at least once a year. I know that the CEO, Tom Garfinkel, and I've gotten to know the Dolphins pretty well, Marino and all them. And they're great alumni. They're always down there, nice, sweet. Uh, and then w- when we're around New York, the, the Dolphins play the Jets, so we go to we go to that game. We know a couple of people to go to, you know, uh, the Giants games and then uh, the Redskins. And we'll, we'll go all over the all over the place. Because that, that was kind of our thing when people asked me what I do as a hobby. And I don't really don't really have one except that was it. We would go to events, so like the Kentucky Derby, pro football, pro baseball. Love going to Yankees games, Red Sox games. I even put one in the dirt at a Diamonds back game from the mound because I'm a big believer. If you're going to throw the first pitch, throw it from the top. You don't, you know, whatever. Yeah. I had a friend Tony La Russa. Um, he he disagreed with me. He said he'll go right in front of the catcher and chuck it to him because I, you know, I don't need to get booed at my age all that shit. But yeah, that's what we used to do. <laughs> It's just fun stuff, you know. And, and, again, you guys know the deal, like getting connections wherever you can, and they'll mm-hmm. just invite you out. Or someone knows someone who owns a business who has a suite. And it's just being in person. And even with um, – I like getting into the into the clubhouse, into the locker room with the teams because um, – especially with some of the kneeling during the anthem stuff, if you can explain it to, to – these athletes are good dudes. Yeah. They really, really are. Just, you know, they're just in a bubble of being the best player on every fucking team they've ever been on. But if you tell them, I, I know that you're not trying to disrespect the troops, but a lot of them are – Kind of a lot of vets are disrespected just by taking a knee. If you just explained it a little better, did it something different, mm. it wouldn't be a problem. But you're just you're listening to the wrong guys because it's just a you know one of those things. But I, I love uh, athletes, uh, great dudes. Uh, um, you know, it's just, it's it's fun. It's just it's fun to go there and get some drinks and you know make little yeah. bets, getting pulls on. So. Yeah, and there there are very. I mean, some of our closest friends that we've made on the show are, are former professional athletes. They're just like. You know, a lot of those guys. Actually, I would say the vast majority of them are people that never thought they were going to be wealthy. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, and now yeah. they are, and they're trying to process that information and also process oh, yeah. process their role in society as leaders. I mean, it's to your point about the kneeling thing. It is uh, whether or not it's intended to be, it still is deeply offensive to some people. So why not find something that isn't? Like I'm not trying to tell you, I'm not trying to tell you one way or the other what to do. Personally, it doesn't offend me because I understand the motive behind it. But it's it's a nuanced yeah. situation. But I understand why a lot of people are. So why why double down on it? Like what? If, yeah, I mean, if, 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 if you get one person that says, as a combat veteran especially, that he's offended, then just, you know, let's fucking do something different. I, I mean, one time the Cowboys did it with Jerry Jones. They took a knee before the National Anthem. Right. All right, whatever. That's what we got to do. We all stand for the National yeah. Anthem. I don't have a problem with that. You know, I, I got a buddy uh, plays for the Heat, uh, Myers Leonard. Um, mm-hmm. and, yeah, and I love his Myers brothers Leonard. Are and, he, you know, it's that's tough for him because he's in, he's, in uh, he's in a community where – you know, there's more black dudes and white dudes, and it's right. very difficult for him to be in the locker room. But it's like, I have to stand. But seeing his friends as he's standing, they're holding, like, holding on to his hand or whatever. That's, I mean, it's still a sign of unity. We're almost there. And it's, but, but again, like, like you were saying, that, um, the, the athletes, not only did they never think they would be wealthy, they still refuse to admit they're role models. And just because right. you say you're not a role model doesn't mean you aren't. Correct. So it's like, it's, it's got to be weird for them. Plus, they're just, they're young, man. They're out of college and they're on tv all the time you know so yeah. it's, it's it, anyway yeah that used to be the thing i'm excited for covid to go away because there's nothing better than getting everyone together especially for a tailgate and then go in mm. you know yeah it is to, to to close out on that social justice thing do you do you remember the one commercial i actually liked from this super bowl was the alicia keys lift every voice in sanguine mm-hmm. because they progressed through uh, a number of different scenarios you see at the beginning of the commercial i'm like oh here we go right, right, right. it's people holding hands and kneeling and shit and then like Two scenes later, about ten seconds further in the, in the commercial, it's a it's a whole other group of dudes standing up with their hand over their heart. Like we could do both of these things, right? Yeah. I thought that was probably the only we we keep hearing about, and we'll get into this now because of all this stupid <clears throat> political bullshit that's going on. But uh, this idea that now that the left is in control and now it's time to settle our differences and, and move on and forget about the past, you know, it's how it's like that, right? Yeah. And anytime, anytime somebody's the winner, they're like, all right, let's just be, uh, let's just. Stop the fighting now that we're on top. Like, no, that's not how that works, guy. But yeah. I thought this one was very well done. That's the best commercial I saw in the Super Bowl, to be honest. And it was, they handled it well. So we all heard that at the Super Bowl they were going to do the Black National Anthem, whatever the fuck that means, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that, I, I understand the, the idea behind that, but come on, man, the Black National Anthem, it's, this is a country. It's one country. Right. Anyways, sure. I thought they handled not, it very well. Not, yeah, there's the National Anthem for everybody. That's, I mean, that's another thing, too, the whole divide and conquer. It's... uh. I don't. I mean, I, it shouldn't be African American, Irish American, uh, Mexican American. It's it's American. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a national anthem. And oh, you know, I like guess the third verse of the national anthem. With I, I mean, I would say ninety nine percent of American people don't know what the third verse is, but I also say fifty percent of American people don't know where Canada is. So it's like, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's the whole the, just the separation. They like they like doing that. They want to separate and divide and conquer. It's, it's like the whole thing with um. You know, it turned from African American to now it's people of color, so that it can be every everyone. You know, just trying to, I don't know. I, and I, you know, again, okay, me being a, a chubby white kid from Montana, I've never dealt with racism myself, so I I couldn't put myself in their shoes. But just the division, I think, is taking steps backward. We should be moving forward. And I, I mean, just get along when you got Maxine Waters out there screaming at people. If you see him in the supermarket, if you see him at the gasoline station, do you know? It's like, come on, man. You just the division is just it's too bad. And it, it seems like to me that like a lot of the um, a lot of the commercials were just about being woke, which I still hate that term. It's, it's, I, I think it's, I think, I think it's taking us back. Well, I mean, it's programmed to be, uh, to be, to be very, uh, rigid and selective. So the, the, pre- the premise is if you don't agree with that, then you're not woke. It's the same thing as Antifa. Like, what are you pro fascism? Like you can't, I'm going to call myself like a uh, uh, pro good. I'm going to start a new organization called Pro Good, and we're yeah. just, just going to burn down people's homes. Pro, well, what, are you, what are you against, good man? What are you? I mean, that's fucking yeah, yeah, stupid, you, right? It's <laughs> the dumbest shit of all time. The fuck out of here. Well, oh. Even with Antifa, it stands for anti-fascist, and what are fascist tactics? Just shutting people down. That's what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, well, they're ridiculous anyway. Yeah, that's yeah, just, silly. Yeah. Not even really worth the time. No, but um, I, I want to go back to something you said earlier about most of these guys who are thrust into leadership positions and don't know what to do, and then they become come role models we're coming up here on the 10-year anniversary from when you killed osama bin laden you're also yeah. one of those guys who probably never thought in a million years that you would be thrust into a role model position oh, or no, no i was going to be a 30-year navy guy <clears throat> retiring as an e8 and coronado was a fat instructor with a cigar in my mouth that was the plan <laughs> 
and and now, now we're in a woke we're in a woke, we're in a woke sense where 20 years after 9/11 I'm the one who can't fly Delta Airlines and they're going to give the goddamn vaccine to Khalid Sheikh Mohammed who masterminded it. Yeah. So this and this is the whole down is up up is down shit. And whatever, <clears throat> uh, you know. But it's yeah. Oh, I never thought I would be here. No, I'm I'm uh, I'm supposed to be um, still trying to be a Navy SEAL doing whatever they do and done. Do you ever do you ever look back at it? Like I mean, again, May second, it's coming up here. Um, yeah. How much your life has changed in 10 years? It's got to be insane. I mean, dude, at the top of this, you were partying with yeah, Kid, yeah. Kid Rock for the Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm sure on May 1st, 2011, you, you didn't think, man, you know what? After tomorrow, I'm going to be best friends with Kid Rock, John Daly, and I'll, we'll probably be hanging out watching the Super Bowl together. It is very surreal. <laughs> Eating really good coffee. <clears throat> no, I, and I even, uh, I, I, when I pulled the trigger, seconds after, I, I remember thinking that I could still see the guy's boots in the room. They came in right after, and uh, I was thinking, is this the best thing I've ever done or the worst? Um, this is going to be – this is a tough one to keep the toothpaste uh, – get it back in the tube type thing. But, no, I never imagined that. But And it started to hit a little bit once uh, I started getting out, and the word sort of spread. And then uh, uh, it was just more of, um, at first, like, rich dudes from New York want to have dinner with you so you can hear the story. And then I know a guy, like, you know, I met the Redskins, and they go there, and you kind of get in the treatment, and then you see yourself – see yourself on TV for the first time. You guys know this. It's just weird. Yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of spooky. And then, uh, and then, like getting recognized by by name, um, I totally didn't expect that ever. It was because it, it was, you know, we're going to be in the shadows. We're going to be silent professionals. Then all of a sudden, you're kind of splashed out there. It's just, it's well, it was even. Um, <clears throat> I said the most. Co- I've, I've heard the most common reaction when because uh, when guys first started hearing that Bin Laden was killed, the first thing everyone asked is who got him. Yeah. And I'm kind of known for being a loudmouth, if you guys didn't know that. And uh, they said, um, they said, who got him? They said, uh, O'Neill got him. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Here we go. <laughs> We're never, never going to hear the end of this. <laughs> uh, it's funny because people always ask us all the time. They're like, hey, man, you're friends with Rob in real life. What's he like? I say the same thing every time. He's the guy you hope killed Bin Laden, yeah. where it's going to be a blast. And, you know, like the first night we hung out, I, I think we watched the Red Sox World Series at Twin Peaks. We were eight yeah. shots deep in the fourth inning of tequila, and it was like, it's the guy you hoped did it, right? Yeah. You don't want the silent yeah. guy who doesn't give interviews, yeah. is, you know, living uh, on, yeah. a, on a ranch in Maryland somewhere. Like, you, you're the yeah. guy. Like, it's, that's, that's what you want in this life. Well, that's even, that's even when people say, like, the words badass and stuff. It's like, I'm not, I've never been a tough guy. I'm not a tough guy. I just, uh, I, I get it. I know I, I'm too dumb to quit, and I just got places. And, and one of my favorite sayings is, wherever you are, be there. Right. So if you present yourself and work hard enough, just hard enough, I'm proof, you, you can get in on anything and it, it'll, it'll happen. It just, uh, well, I don't know, Rob, just, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt that dev grew has the same annual budget that the, the entire Marine Corps does. Okay. That's very true. It that's is, very true. Yeah. I mean, that's, they, that's they what it to, takes to pr- produce that kind of fucking operator. It takes a lot we of We didn't shoot a lot. Too. We, we, um, we would say that, and it wasn't even a detriment to the, if I'm even using that word right to the Marine Corps, because Marines yeah. do the most with, with, with not, not as much. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, but we, we, in green team selection, we would be shooting more in a day than a Marine would in a year. Yeah. Uh, just because of, because of the budget. I mean, who the hell in the military gets, get not on a C-130, gets on a private jet to fly, to go skydiving in Arizona. Like right, that yeah, was yeah. a yeah. Again, thing for us. Yeah. Just a, just a budget is good. It's great. I mean, great product. And well, even when we started bringing the Marsaw guys over to go through our selection to get, uh, to get the, their tier one unit, right. we were worried they weren't going to want to leave. Like they're, 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 we're here to train these dudes they're not going to want to go back to the Marine Corps after, after seeing just the amount of money in the right. budget. Not, I mean, and again, just the quality of people. Like once you go through that many selections, then you're just going to have good people. Yeah. Do you think, uh, like, in the modern world right now, what, what is the – do we really need a large standing conventional infantry military right now? I feel like all we've been talking about for the last 20 years is how we need to use more and more operator level surgical stuff and blah, blah, blah. I know you need boots on the ground sometimes, particularly when you're, I mean, look, we shouldn't be doing nation building in the first place, but if you're going to do that, you obviously need bodies, right? So that is what it is. But why aren't we training more and more people to that higher level uh, of, 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 of a standard? I don't understand why we haven't made, I mean, I'm, they've I expanded like the special forces groups and stuff like that. Uh, but you know the Navy hasn't really done anything to that effect, to my knowledge, right? There's no new team. No, the, 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 no, the Navy. Um, the Navy's going to be used for what the Navy will always be used for, just the obvious uh, forward defense deterrence, like mm. having a carrier off the coast. Uh, but I think that I think the, the traditional military, the traditional infantry, needs to be there 
when they turn when the when the when the war turns into simply turning the lights off. Right. When do you turn off the satellites? How about Space Force? When does GPS go away? Mm. When are we back to map and compass? Right. Um, my uh, my damn uh, um, J, my JDAM won't reach now because it can't read. Right. Um, electronic warfare, right. nothing flies. Um, right. Shit like that. I, I, it was all. It would, I would always go back to the basics. You know, when we would be doing hydrographic reconnaissance, uh, where you're just dipping a lead line and counting the soundings yeah. on your on your on your line. <laughs> when we could just do side scan sonar with a submarine. What happens if a submarine gets sunk? Right. Um, you, you know, it's a whole. You, you never. You, you're going to be happy. With, it's better to need it, not have it, have it, not need it. Type shit. Right. And if we get away from the base, I think being great at anything is is mastering the basics. Like you're really, really good at CQB if you remember that your outside foot goes in, you go the opposite way to get in front of you. Don't yeah. get all complex with stairwell all the way. We'll figure it out by reading off each other. Keep the basics down. Keep it simple. We will be good. So the short answer is yes. We do need that. We always need the Marine Corps for obvious reasons. I mean, right. if nothing else, because Marines give Navy so much shit, it's just fun yeah, to listen to. Yeah. And it's they're 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 the right amount of pissed off. I mean, it's pe- people think that the Marine Corps is disenfranchised in some way. I think it's intentional, frankly. Like they want they want those Marines to be fucking mad all the time. I think that's and it's and it's worked out pretty well so far. Yeah, right, for our yeah. country. Uh, you know, it's I, I was uh, rereading the book Stealing Fire. I'm not sure if you've ever read it before, but I highly oh. recommend it. Uh, uh, okay. we, put it in my notes. Yeah, it's it's uh, a sen- Stealing Fire is a nod to Prometheus, who you know. Uh, was uh, he stole whatever Kaikon or whatever the fuck it was called that drug that opened the minds of the gods or whatever the fuck it's that story where uh, the elite had access to something that was really beneficial but they tried to hold on to it and control it mm-hmm. and then he went and took it and it's basically stealing fire is about how uh, people are using uh, a, like an adonic counter like hedonism uh, ayahuasca mushrooms MDMA uh, sometimes even just skydiving whatever it is right yeah. to get to that level and then a lot of it is group yeah. flow and that's something that Dev Guru does a lot there's one quote in the book uh, I don't remember I'll paraphrase but it, essentially it's like I watched these dudes going through the shoot house over and over again and it looked like it was choreographed and you cannot give a bigger compliment to a fucking team of guys. You can't choreograph when another team goes in and sets up the targets in a different position every single time. Oh, yeah. You don't know where you're going. You get right. different walls. Yeah. You different yep. ways, different hallways. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So it's like... It, but it does it, look... Yeah, you must choreograph because, yeah, they simply can... They can see they can see the short field in front of them. Exactly. And, and, and the rest of and ev- And it's... Yeah. He's, he's describing the movements. He's like, it looks like everybody is moving in unison like they've rehearsed this a million times and i guess in some ways on particular operations you do rehearse over and over again but for the most part that's just something that happens when you're in that group state like his rifle he's explaining this uh i I heard him in another interview it's on the book but he was explaining how he's up in the catwalk watching these guys go through and it was like without hesitation this guy's weapon goes up while his goes down and vice versa and they move they move like there's string attached to them like it's just like there's an access point between them and it's the most impressive thing I've ever seen, to be honest. Well, but it, you know, but when it gets go ahead, when it gets confusing is when you try to choreograph it because right, yeah. it's like even even on the Bin Laden raid when they they were asking if we wanted to try to find out what the house looked like inside, we're like absolutely not because if you tell us as soon as we get into right turn yeah. and we rehearse that over and over, as soon as we get into left turn, yes, yeah. it's, it's not going to be the same. Yeah. I don't want to. I, um, I used to say to Intel um, Intel reps, <clears throat> they would say, okay, there's a Six guys on this target, uh, ten women and fifteen children. I would say I don't want to hear that. I want to hear this amount, of, this amount of people, and I'll figure out who they are when I get there. I don't, don't, don't tell me who's who because for all we know, it's thirty fucking dudes. You know, maybe, maybe it's all women. Um, yeah, it's the choreographing. Just again, it's just the basics, muscle memory, mm. and effective, effective communication. And um, <clears throat> the best, the best we ever we communicate is when we stop talking. Yeah, that's what he. That's another point he made. He was like, nobody said a fucking word the whole time they were going through the shoot house. They would look at each other, and the guy would immediately respond and react. But it's really simple. The your instinct is faster than your hippocamp than your memory. Like to to access your hippocampus is going to take longer, even if it's a fraction of a second, than just reacting to something you've reacted to a million times. It's so impressive. You got to read this book. Do they tell you to stay silent when you're doing that, when you guys are going through the walkthroughs and all that stuff? Um, they started to <clears throat> when I first got – well, we started doing it SEAL Team 2 before there was real combat. And we would uh, we would say try to – we're going to time you on one run where you just do your whole thing with moving, move, you know, hall boss here, all this bullshit. Uh, then you're going to do it silent without n- any talking at all. You can, you can stomp the ground and you can hit the wall. That's it. And we would do it about 30 or 40 seconds faster without talking. 
just because uh because people start yelling it just it's just going to add to the soup you know it's going right. to be making crazy like, like i would I, and then we would do it to our guys well when one of the first things we did when when guys got done with selection and got into uh, what well, my, my squadron was red squadron is we would put we would put them in the house so we got a five-story kill house mm. we put them in there all in one room with the lights off but they have blue barrels and they said we've got two, uh, two teams coming in dual entry just listen and all of a sudden they're just getting shot eventually because <clears throat> giving them the uh <clears throat> the perspective of i can't hear what's coming now that it's like what instead of instead of yelling clear why aren't you just yelling we're right here just yeah. shut the fuck up yeah. and watch how fast you're not telling them where you are like <clears throat> if someone turns a corner and points up i don't need you to yell stairwell i'm assuming it's a stairwell right you're pointing up right you right know? that's i mean so it, just, it, it makes a lot of sense and it's uh you know those those tactics that you guys those ttps you guys worked out over the year years it's not just a- applicable to military shit i mean that ability to communicate non-verbally is something that is is you you only see it in like sports in the military you don't see it anywhere else i mean you you'll mm-hmm. see it on you'll see it in like uh clo- like very professional level close protection details like uh you know Gavin De Becker's teams out there in California and shit like that but you don't really see it that much anywhere else and mm-hmm. i don't know why i don't know why i mean look there's some places where it's not really uh uh applicable like if you're in a business meeting Maybe it's not applicable, yeah. but maybe it is, right? If you're in a negotiation, like a tense negotiation with somebody, and you fucking know the level that you're, if you're in a flow state with your buddy over here, you guys like pick up. Like Ross and I do this all the time. He, I know exactly where he's going with his questions because we've done it together so much, right? Mm-hmm. I, it's when we have new people on the show. Sometimes they feel like they can't get a word in, right? A lot because we're so we were bouncing off each other so well, and I'm sure that there, there's some application to the non-military world i just wonder when we're going to figure that out yeah i don't know i think i and not necessarily um not speaking but knowing when you're done like right. if i'm done like my one of my favorite sayings is when you're done saying what you're saying stop saying it because people want it's the whole thing it's the whole thing office space with peter and uh i've got five bosses and i fuck up the tps reports i gotta hear about it five times yeah, yeah. it's like fuck get done with saying and let's move on you know that. I th- yeah, better communication. I think dude is like, like another one too. I don't know. This is again out of out of left field, but remember those military emails you'd get, and some officer would be explaining something for ten paragraphs, and then it would say B L U F or bottom line up front. Yeah, it's yeah. like if it's the bottom line up front, why is it five pages in? No, the bottom line up front is supposed to be a single paragraph, three to four sentences at the top of the goddamn page. That's it, and then <laughs> end of slideshow. Yeah. Boy, they love their PowerPoint. Remember, oh, the, remember the, like, the, commun- the communicators would come in with all the satellites and all this different shit. With oh, it's yeah. like, dude, if I hit this button, can I talk? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's the other thing, I guess, about conventional military is that uh, if things do break down, because uh, the thing that makes a four to 12 man team effective is, is close air support, IR. I mean, this, or, oh, uh, no yeah, doubt I mean, about it. Th- there's all that stuff without, without all that stuff, you're, you're going to be fucked. Right. I mean, we've seen it before. Oh, if you proper. like, yeah. uh, like Red Wings when they got out of communication, that was a bad situation would, for everybody. I, I was just going to say that, like, t- take, take, you know, uh, uh, take away our close air support, have a couple pipe fitters fighting the Taliban in the mountains. Yeah. That's going to be a much fairer fight. Yeah, for sure. Than, you know, because we, you know, you love the love the A10s and love the fast movers and the Apaches and the damn Kiowas and all that stuff, but you mm. take them away. That's that is they, they call it a force multiplier for a reason. Yeah, yeah. One of the like speaking of effectively communicating. Um, one of the best uh, things I ever had, I, I was in a really shitty gunfight near the border of Pakistan, couldn't get air support for an hour, and I had to, I meant to call him in, um, whatever, and junior guy, young dude up there, and all he said to me, because there's a lot of shit going on trying to call in close air support, all he said to me was, talk to me like I'm a man. <laughs> That's really? good, though. I, I say... And I, I, I think the first thing I responded with was, I see why women find you attractive. <laughs> <laughs> That is that's actually an interesting point, though, because uh, I I yell at people all the time. I'm like, get to the get out of here with the preamble. You don't don't worry about my feelings. Give me the fucking facts. Give me the information. I don't don't, I don't need the context for this. I'll just give me the information. And if I have questions, I'll ask. Right. That's but it is it's a tool like we, we let it's not just political correctness. It's like this this social need to be polite when politeness isn't necessarily relevant. You know what I mean? If I'm trying to exactly. del- yeah, if I'm trying to deliver information to you in any setting, whether it's a personal relationship or a business relationship or in the military or whatever it is, your feelings are not important when I'm delivering the information. The information is what is important. You can decide the information how to- is important. 
Yeah, yeah. You decide yeah, how to the process that stuff. Information support, yeah, and, and 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 facts don't care about feelings. That's it. Of course not. That's why your like, that's why your organization is so important because you are taking men and women that know this. They know it. They know it yeah. because their lives depended on it, and now they're yeah. turning it into fucking success in the business world. I mean, your guys, I've I've worked with a lot of these companies that do placement for both operators and traditional military folks in the corporate world. And nobody has a higher success rate than you guys. And it's because of that. Yeah. We're about 99% success yeah. and attrition. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous yeah, how it's... high it is. By the way, I just well, want to, yeah. I, I want to say that, that that's, these are the real conversations you guys are having in hardcore gunfights. Like, Oh yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. For real? It's yeah, like... no, when we, uh, when we, um, in the bin Laden thing, I see like zero dark 30 and another one, if it's on fucking, I'm watching it. Yeah. But, uh, I, I wish they would have had, they did a little bit of the humor, but if they would have, I don't. I think that people that advised on that movie, like maybe knew a guy that knew a guy, mm. because like one of my the funniest conversations that we had is I didn't I didn't even know the damn helicopter crashed. I they were saying dash one going down. I thought they were saying dash one going around. So like they're gonna do a racetrack or whatever. Mm. So I and so when I got in, like here's how fucked up it was. So I ended up, went in there. So I'm going. They just opened a door. Thumb came out. I recognized the thumb with the with the, with the gloves on. I walk past there's the, the two air crew, the two pilots from Dash One standing there. I can see American flags. I remember all I was thinking was, what the fuck are these guys? Would you park but, it uh, somewhere? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, so we went, we went in and uh, my, my buddy, so we're on the bottom floor. My buddy said, said uh, yeah, the helicopter crashed. So he whispered something. I said, oh, Jesus, what helicopter crash? Because I thought some of the 47s coming in behind us that didn't have technology got shot down. Right. I just lost 30 friends or something. Right. And he goes, our helicopter crashed in the front yard. Like you walked right past it. And I'm like, okay, but I, was, I think I was looking this way. As we're saying this, one of the snipers is running around outside with Cairo and, and Cheese. So Cheese mm. has Cairo, the dog, and the sniper. And he got to the point where that the tail of the helicopter was over the yeah. f- fence. And he he was on my helicopter. It didn't register to him either for some reason. And he said, guys inside, be on alert. They're definitely ready for us. They've got a training mock-up of our super secret helicopter <laughs> in the front yard. And the, the boss, the boss oh, came over and he goes, he goes, no, he goes, no jackass, that's ours because we crashed. And he said, that makes a lot more sense than the shit I was just talking about. Carry on. <laughs> and all of that conversation was going on inside the house that day. I was, yeah, I was on the first floor of Bin Laden's house watching cool guys do cool shit. And I'm hearing this in my ear. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's hilarious. I, some of this stuff, I, it's, it's just too bad that we weren't all filming everything all the time just so we could get the blooper reels out of war because it's some of the oh, funniest Jesus, shit. Some of the... Some of, some of the some of the comedy that comes out, we had, um, I had a buddy of mine that, okay, you remember Ranger Beads? Yeah. For people who, who people don't know that, there's, there's, there's nine beads, every whatever, for me it was 62 steps, is 100 yeah. yards, so you put 100 yards down, no, no, 62, 200, 300, yeah. you get to nine, boom, up, one, you got to click, you got to click. Yep. And um, we were all about splitting uh, weight, like I'm going to cut as much weight as I can off me because ounces equal pounds, I don't want to be heavy going up mountains. So I got rid of my Ranger Beads and, and my boss said, Why'd you get rid of the Ranger bees? I said, well, every time Terrence falls, it's fucking 100 yards. <laughs> <laughs> Is there no body cams during any of this? Like, w- when you're going into uh, these houses? Uh, there might be now. We, we didn't carry them just um, just for the simple fact that uh, Monday morning quarterback is way easier when mm. someone's sitting there drinking coffee saying, why'd you shoot this guy when you shouldn't have type shit? Yeah, fuck that. Um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I was wondering. It's the whole people. Uh, people want justice served, but they don't really need to know what it looks like. Yeah, and it, you, you definitely. I mean, we we see it all the time with all sorts of people. If you put your faith in your command, chances are you're going to get fucked over at some point. You know what I mean? The oh only, yeah. The only people you can trust is are the men to your left and right. That's it. That are right next yeah. to you. Yep, that's it. That's 100% it. Percent right. Yeah, I, I, which is fucked up because we still go do it, even though we know that we're going to get fucked over at some point. It's very bizarre. It's almost like akin to the yeah. to the gang mentality. Like, yeah, I'm going to die or go to jail at some point, but this is what I do. And I wouldn't want to be judged from that as it, like, you know, oh, off a body what? cam of whatever happens because no. you can't predict all that shit. And you're right. People could go through that footage and uh, and say anything yeah. they wanted to in a court of law. Yeah. 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 I mean, look at every time we take one of these fucking woke, dumb, dumb journalists and put them through a shoot house or a, a shoot, no shoot scenario. How many times do they live through that? Zero times. They, yeah. will, they will never, there will, there will never be, even by luck, it'll never happen. I, and I'm glad you brought this, uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought this up. Did you watch the Tiger Woods doc by any chance? Loved it. I watched it twice in two days. Loved it. Okay, great. That was around your era um, with when he was training with the Navy SEALs and all that yeah. shit. Did you have any friends that Tiger Woods was, was with during that period? What team was it? Team three or something? Yeah, they were out with team, I think team three. I know it was on the West Coast. Mm. And um, 
They, I mean, he, like he, he could not have supported the military anymore. He wanted it to actually stop golf and then and then enlist or some shit like that. Um, uh, yeah, it was just I, what they kept saying though is he was just he was like socially awkward. Mm. Like he didn't understand how it worked in a team or some weird shit. I, I guess I guess he and his dad growing up only playing golf together and all yeah. that stuff. I'm not sure, but I mean, great guy. I've been to his house before. I actually uh, had dinner at his son's fifth birthday in in, in Florida. Well, I'm watching this kid hit golf balls. I'm like. I might become Ben's best friend with this little dude because he's going to be a pro. No, you got to, you got to, you got to blindside him. You got to catch him walking to school one day to scoop him up. Like, hey, I adopt him. I adopted this kid. Guy, yeah. Tiger's yeah. like, Tiger's texting you like, hey, you got my kid. And it's like, like yeah, 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 man, of course not. Um, what are you talking uh, about? Susan, Susan, uh, whatever the fuck her name is. They just played yeah, in like a, a tournament together, though. He oh, was really? uh, Tiger yeah. was caddying. Yeah. yeah, it does look like that kid's going to be a fucking good golfer, doesn't it? Has, I'll tell you what, his swing's incredible. It's just absolutely incredible. He's and uh, no Tiger was cool as hell. It's like it was. It's weird to walk into someone's house. Here's all these trophies for majors, and like Serena Williams is sitting at the table. It's like, what in the world is going on here? There's he's. I mean, he definitely had the kind of drive necessary to do that job. But yeah, it's it's he. I mean, he grew up with just his dad railing on him all the time, and then played an individual sport for years. He's that type of experience doesn't really translate to a small unit like that a team no yeah. his dad was a vietnam veteran he was, yeah. he was a he was a an sf guy wasn't he yeah, yeah i think so yeah yeah what I, the story that i read was uh when they got fed up with tiger's bullshit uh all the guys you know and whatever team he was with was uh you know they'd walked him through all the 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 houses and all that shit what do you what do you call him uh Shoot house? yeah house. yeah CBS. and they let, him, they let him do all the cool guy shit and pretend that he was awesome and well, could possibly yeah, I, be a navy seal no, if if I'm if I'm running a, a a team or a unit and a celebrity like even my wife Jessica and I were watching the special together the documentary which is excellent he didn't approve it excellent documentary it's excellent but he uh, they were like no is he really doing that I'm like no this is what we call a dog and pony show like this is we bring someone in we make you know you pretend it's like it's like bringing your daughter to work day like she's over there with a with a, a marker on the whiteboard I'm helping daddy it's like yeah you're helping. Yeah, that's what it that's what it felt like. And the story that I read was when they they finally got sick of him was I guess they had all gone to like uh, like a shitty like fish house for dinner. Right. And there was like six guys at the table and the bill comes um, and it was only, that. it was only like a two hundred dollar meal. And Tiger said separate tabs and he was serious. And they were like, fuck you. It was like a two hundred dollar meal. Um, and they were like, we we're all. I, I, I heard the story. I don't want to. I, you know, I've, I've been the, the butt of some rumor mill, and so I don't want to get in someone's shit if I don't know. Him. But um, when I met him, he was great. Uh, I'm assuming they did the celebrity thing, like, the same time, you know, same as you bring the Secretary of Defense into your kill house and let him do whatever. Um, I mean, could he have made him shit? I mean, look at his um, – his his uh, his work ethic and precision as a golfer. I mean, he, mm. he's the he was the best in the world. The only the only the only reason he failed is he wasn't used to pussy. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he started getting thrown at him like he's fucking. Yeah. Um, Waffle House waitresses and shit. Yeah, he didn't know Perkins. Didn't, somebody, somebody like his dad. That should have been his dad's last thing before he dies. Like hire a fucking personal assistant for Tiger to manage his day to day fuckery. Yeah, like just admit yeah. admit you are who you are, and then plan for it, right? But yeah. I, I will say this: like in in L.A., all the actors, like the the guys who get super famous and then they feel guilty about it and all this shit, it's because they never had pussy before, mm. and then they just didn't know what to do then, and they're it, yeah, it was just a panic. Handle. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's pretty I easy. Mean, to, uh, pretty easy to understand what to do. A lot, do of, these, a lot of these celebrities, they're, they're not. They're not like us, where we're ugly as fuck, and we have to work to mm. get the ladies. You know, I like I work my ass off to get my wife. <laughs> um, but yes, but yeah, have a body, man. Have a like. I had a, a dude from the Redskins uh, when I was speaking to them. He he pulled me aside after a team meeting. I gave a speech, and he said, "Hey, man, what kind of gun should I be carrying?" I said, "Dude, none." Have a guy with a gun, yeah. and he can also be your fucking weed guy, and he's always seven feet behind, so when he gets busted, you're good. Yeah, exactly. Why the hell would you be carrying anything? I say that all the time, dude. You've got to have, like, like when Mac Miller died, like, somebody cleaned out the house. Yeah. All the drugs were gone. All the, all the bad shit was gone. You've got to have a guy with you who wipes your, your browser, you know? Clears all the porn oh, yeah. off your, your laptop and all yeah, that sure. shit. Uh, so you brought, up the, uh, you brought up the Secretary of Defense. What do you think about this guy? Hey, what do you think about the new guy? You know what I, I, well, I mean, he's he's I think he's going to be sort of an activist. I try to I try to stay optimistic about it because he is a four, was a former four star. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that can go either way, getting appointed when you you get to a certain point where everything's political. Right. Um, I hope he's OK. I mean, he seems he seems to 
you know, well-educated, but what does well-educated mean? How are you educated? Like, you know, you could get a, a degree from Princeton in, in transgender studies or whatever. It doesn't mean you're a shooter. So hard to say. Um, I, I, I want to, you know, well, shit, I went into this uh, first part of this, <laughs> this administration trying to be as positive as I can. It's it's hard to, like, it's it, it's hard to, 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 to say that the guy mumbling through a mask that has Alzheimer's is portraying toughness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's he's he's having trouble walking upstairs. He's having trouble doing a lot of stuff right now. I know. Uh, I've uh, never been a fan of the Pentagon anyway. I think it's we just yeah. call it the five sided wind tunnel. Yeah, uh, I think there's a lot of people that are in a lot. I mean, I, I do like redundancy, like we were talking about earlier, as far mm. as a uh, map and compass versus GPS. But mm. I think there are a lot of people. I mean, if if you're a one star and can't get a parking spot, there's too many fucking officers in the building. Yeah, no shit. I mean, it's. And how many of those officers have real combat experience? I mean, what are we talking about exactly here? Less than one. Less yeah, than one percent. Probably. I mean, it's, and I mean, even real combat for an officer is not real combat unless you're like a first lieutenant in the Marine Corps. Yeah, yeah. The real combat is when you're really fighting, and it's not. It's not. I mean, no disrespect to the to, to a lot of the you know a lot of really good captains out there. I've worked for a lot of solid officers, mm-hmm. but there's some of them out there, like the the, the the lieutenant colonel Vindmans of the world that, that we can do without you. Oh, that guy. He just looks like a little Remember, fucking squirrely bitch, doesn't he? I want to punch that guy we, right in his face. Every I, time I think about him, I want to punch him in his face. I, every combat vet thought the same thing. As soon as we see him, I know who he is. I yeah. know someone. I know like, 50 dudes just like him. Like, get the fuck out of yeah. here. You're, yeah. you're, the dude that, uh, the dude that uh, eats up all the Salisbury steak, buys all the Maxim magazines, and doesn't have any dirt on him. That guy. <laughs> and he's got like a pallet of root beer outside of his fucking room in, in uh, Baghdad. Yeah. Like, get fuck, guy. Come on. We've seen him. Yeah, he's, there, he's there. He's there. I was actually. He's a, not. Go ahead. No, I was just saying he's not the the E four coming in from uh, riding the tour in a Humvee all day in Kandahar. No, I, I'll tell you. That's, I'll, that's, that's I'll tell you what. Uh, we uh, we talk a lot on this show about being dirtbags and shit like that. I don't trust anybody that's not one, frankly. And there's it, it's why it's why I think certain uh, military units and law enforcement agencies are more effective than others. Like the DEA, if you've ever even been in the same room as a, as cocaine, you're not getting hired there ever. And I'm I wonder to myself, how the fuck are we producing effective uh, drug enforcement agents who don't know shit about drugs, right? Who don't know how it works. Yeah. That, that's mm-hmm. that's very bizarre to me. So I'll take a dirty uniform uh, E4 paratrooper over pretty much <laughs> anybody any day into a gunfight, frankly, because I know that motherfucker's there to get it done. Uh, it doesn't, yeah. Like all these other qualities that we put uh, uh, you know, up on this pedestal just don't make any sense. So all these officers, man, just, they drive me fucking crazy. You can see it every time they get involved in politics, too. It always goes the same. Oh way. yeah, they just well, become the, they become the same that's, thing. That's why the uh, I mean I never I don't like conspiracy theories, but like the uh, the, the, the 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 vast military complex, what do they call it? A lot of these four stars get appointed by politicians, so that as soon as they get done, they can work for the big contractors to get the big military contracts. So we all line our pockets. Well, luckily, that's- luckily, General Lloyd Austin has already done that. He's already he already owns like uh, a couple million dollars worth of stock in Raytheon. He's got his own private firm that does military industrial complex stuff. He work. He's uh, let's see, Raytheon, Tenet, uh, uh, what's the other one? Pine Island, Pine Island Capital, I think, is the name of his company. Like really? he, he's already he's Dick Cheney two point oh, right? He goes, he, yeah. he serves, I mean, well, Dick Cheney never served in the military, but he goes and serves in Washington for a little while, then uh, goes into the private sector, then becomes sec def, and then goes back into the private sector right after that. That's yeah. what Dick Cheney Taking did in 93, yeah. yeah. That's what they're doing. Too. Yeah, and I mean, at least Dick Cheney was kind of honest about it. He sort of said what he was doing. I mean, and hey, you know, you got to, you know, put yourself in their shoes. I'd probably do it. I mean, look, I mean, I, I, I don't care for the, you know, Hunter Biden, but I would have partied with him. That's I say that every day. Yeah. Who are you taking to Vegas, Hunter Biden or Jared Kushner? It's not even a fucking question. Mm-hmm. Not Hunter, even a question. Oh, Hunter, Hunter, Hunter Biden, we're rolling. As a matter of fact, <laughs> if Hunter Biden said, "Hey, I want to come on the show," I'm like, "Yeah, let's do that." And then you spend like a week here and let's just fucking party. Yeah, let's just rage. Let's just absolutely <laughs> fucking rage. Let's try not to sell our country out to China or anything. But if we can get fucked up, that'd be great. Yeah, bring the crack in the <laughs> iPhone and we can videotape all of it. And yeah. you put it on your laptop have you seen, and we'll. Have you, seen the, have you seen the pictures off of his uh, computer? Oh yeah, I watched the video. Yeah. So I, dude, I, I apparently I was the only one I feel like who has watched the full sex tapes. Well, you couldn't put so. Oh, I haven't. I haven't. No, I haven't seen it. Really? Every social media uh, organization, as soon as it came out, blacklisted that fucking whole domain, that website that it was on. Yeah. So if you if in any new domain it got put on, they blacklisted that the entire domain. Yes. Yeah, right? So so I had to was, type it in letter by letter off of like you know a bunch of listeners had oh, sent yeah. it in. So I had to go letter by letter, and it was on a Chinese website. Like yeah. I, I will say that. Like so. what? what expl- so just, explain to me why 
social media would have gone out of their way to block that when they've done nothing to block other celebrity sex tapes and shit. Like, why him? Yeah. I, I, Time, well, Mag- I mean, Time Magazine did an article on this, back. by the way. I think it all comes back to China, Bill Gates, uh, Jeff Bezos, and, and the Bidens. I think, I think yeah. there's something behind this thing. And, you know, but, and again, I, I wasn't there. I don't know. Um, all I can say for sure, but if you're, if you're taking a picture of your dick on, on your phone with a tape measure out, you've got some confidence and good on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and look, if you are, and let's say you're a smaller guy, go ahead and uh, take a take a pair of scissors to that ruler, and then oh, just chop down. Different. What no, you I... want to do is you want to chop off the first like three inches, start at three, and then measure up, and no one will. You know, know. what we should do? We should make a custom <laughs> tape measure that's wrong. Yes, like yes. it's a, it's but like that's clear, a really good idea. Every, every inch is represented by three quarters of an inch. You're like, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Rob, I'll break down the sex tapes for you in case you haven't seen them. Um, yeah, because, you know, that's what we do here. So the first one um, kind of looked like a CD motel. Uh, Might have been nice at some point, but he had the windows kind of blocked out for drug use, obviously. Um, was smoking crack the entire time. Uh, the first video was a side angle. So it was a side angle of the bed. Um, and he was getting a blowjob from it. it How many would, times would have you like watched a this shit? I know you don't have a fucking memory. I do. Your memory's not that good. How many times have you watched this shit? I, my memory for porn is oh, very, fair, very yeah. good. Very good. That's fair. Um, and I, and I'm, you know, look, I'm also a director. So I'm looking at the angles going, all right, well, how did he shoot this? And why does it exist on that laptop? So what he did was he was recording off the laptop. So the laptop was shooting this way as a master is what we call it in the biz. You can see the yeah. entire room him getting his dick sucked. But then also in that, he was using his iPhone down by his feet so he could get another angle shooting in. What was the long-term plan there? Was he going to get it edited into a whole thing or what? That's what I can't figure out because he was filming from two different devices in the room, but they were both like generic shit. So it wasn't like he was using nice cameras or had hired a crew or anything. But he does clearly watch a lot of BTS porn. Yes. Right. And and all he was doing was getting a foot job and one of his, the the funniest lines, because the first one was about 15 minutes. Um, one of the funniest lines in it was, uh, he goes, well, I bet you're getting a good leg workout today. Um, <laughs> and that's so real. audio? Why was I not told of this? Yes, so there's audio and video, and uh, and then somebody had translated it down at the bottom, so some of the words you couldn't make out, they kind of helped you out yeah. with, kind of like a Netflix doc. Yeah. Um, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, right, I'm here for the content. It, yeah, <laughs> as far as sex tapes go, like that's a one and done type sitch, like just to say you watched it and you were like, all right, cool. Has anybody made T-shirts with that that famous still from the thing where he's like at the crack pipe? No, and I'll tell you why. Um, like Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Like if you post that picture, if you just want to do this as a, as a funsy thing at home, post the picture with the crack pipe. They will now take it down. So they wiped it off of Drinking Bros feed. They w- wiped it off of my Instagram. So that infamous picture of him with the crack pipe was wiped down. And then you'll get a description from Instagram saying. This this photo uh, we have you know uh, disproven or somebody else has disproven it. It was like no, no it's, a, it's, it's a video. It, yeah, and I'm like it's uh, definitely yeah. him smoking it's crack. Definitely seen it. Now what? Where are we? Uh, <clears throat> where are we? Liberty wise, when two of the most powerful companies on earth can decide what to and what not to put in front of people's eyeballs. That's right? what I don't understand. Um, because like Jennifer Lawrence and all those guys when they're when they're nudes leaked, right? Yeah. Super yeah. embarrassing. They, they couldn't do anything to really take it down. Yeah. Hunter Biden's, though, they shut that down across the world. Yeah. Yep. Well, they've all got interest in doing it. It's, again, I mean, someone's 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 making money somewhere off it. And, and I mean, it's the same thing with uh, with this uh, Dominion voting shit. It's mm. like, OK, he didn't cheat. That guy got 84 million votes. OK. Yeah. It's it seems crazy, although I think uh, I've, I've heard some stuff recently that makes a lot of sense to me. Apparently, old white Republican voters voted for Joe Biden. I've, I've heard this as well. They were pissed off about Trump's flippancy towards the fucking covid shit. Yeah, I, I guess. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's 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 something because we know that like he had record numbers of black and brown voters this year. Right. Correct. I mean, like huge yes, numbers in that. So I guess that would make sense. To yeah. So and, and the reason why is old rich white people hate to die apparently so <laughs> they were like yo dude why don't you care about us and he's like well I but just meanwhile all the, all the leadership on the left was telling you one thing and then going to the french laundry you mm-hmm. know what i mean so why didn't they apply that same standard i never understand this like you the standard is the standard 
That's why you use the goddamn word standard. Right. That's what that word means. So if you selectively apply the, the standard, then it's not a standard. It's just, it's just partisanship, right? That's yeah. nonsense. Can we just admit that that's what that is? Because I'm tired of having these goddamn conversations with people. What about this and what about this? All of a sudden now, these cages that children are being kept in are for, yeah, protect, they're they're for, they're for protection from COVID now. You know what I mean? Is that real? Yeah. Oh, it's God. like, oh, we're, we, you know, uh, to make sure people aren't too cramped in these facilities, we've decided to fucking put them in. And they were like, oh, these uh, tent cities are fucking concentration camps. <laughs> yeah. And fucking AOC standing in an empty parking lot looking all sad like a puppy. Are yeah, you fucking kidding me? Right. Like, Jesus Christ, man. I mean, we're fucked here, right? We're fucked. The only thing that I, I keep wondering is if, like, when, when all this gets lifted or we get vaccinated or whatever, are, are, is Delta going to remove the ban on you from flying on their airline. Well, they said they would. They said it's going to last until um, the mask mandate goes away, which who knows what. But I mean, I was hitting a, a mil- I was at a million miles, which is a lot on a commercial airline, and they're uh, they were my first choice forever. And if I mean, I, maybe I'll fly them again, but I doubt it. Like they 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 don't appeal to me. I just I think it's, I think it's bullshit. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, how, you you can go every single day of your life and see somebody posting. A video of themselves. It, it start, it's usually like a Snapchat thing. It starts on their own face. They're wearing a mask, and then they pan around. Oh, there's a person right there, person right there, person right there, person right there. Like, come on. Yeah. This is stupid. Like, there's a mask. And it was, just, it was, it was a bad joke on my part. I, I was just um, I was having fun. Uh, you know, whatever. Had to have a few drinks on the flight. Didn't didn't realize, you know, the caption was wrong because the dude behind me in the USMC had. I didn't I didn't see him. Mm. And um I, I mean, I'm a, I had like eight or nine masks on me at the time. Like, I, I'm not an anti-masker. Mm. I just was, I thought it's odd that if I'm sitting here eating the peanuts you just brought me, that I can't get COVID for the next 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's just very bizarre the way we've decided yeah. to do this. Like, I mean, I get it from that perspective. Masks definitely work because they block water from coming out of your face. That's how yeah, it yeah, works, yeah, right? Yeah. But is it an effective uh, deterrent if you're touching your face all the time and touching other stuff? Like the places yeah. that people go and frequently take their mask off, bars and restaurants, 1.6% of COVID cases are coming from those places. Look, it's, yeah, right. it's all fucking ridiculous. Right? All I kept thinking was how angry your wife was oh, because my yeah. wife is so fucking oh, pissed. You should have seen, <laughs> you should have seen his wife when, uh, so he lost a Super Bowl bet to me a couple of years ago and had to get a perm. Yeah. And uh, it was right before they went to the Bahamas for the birthday. Correct. Right? Correct. My wife's birthday. Yeah. So he looked like Magnum PI for like three months. Yeah, I, I had a full perm. A mustache, I remember that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Full, full perm, all that shit. But I'm the I'm the asshole who always like magically forgets his mask. I got COVID though, like opening week. You know, like so I was just yeah. like, oh well, fuck, I can't get it again. Well, you could probably get it again by now. Who gives a shit? That's uh, that is untrue. Um, no, it's not. It's the way the flu works. No, Vi- viral activity like that is, and there's the, not there's, living my life like that, Rob. No, Sorry. well, who cares though? I mean, honestly, who cares? <laughs> Whether you get it or not, you're not old. Or, uh, you're I feel like I'm above fat. the law. Um, but uh, well, wait. I, have a, I, have a, I have a theory about it. Uh, I'm, I'm convinced that um, that, uh, that COVID was uh, was developed by China in a lab, and um, I don't know if they released it on purpose to get a reaction, which I think they did, but uh, or if it was by accident. But the problem is, you get a man-made virus, you release it into Mother Nature. Mother Nature is going to have it. A dwarf. It's gonna it's gonna morph, you know. Mm-hmm. It's going to uh, get different types of strains. And something about nature, you might notice, things like to live. <laughs> and uh, if a things trying to trying to convert itself and fight to live, whatever the fuck it is, I think it's here for a long time. So so I'll be flying American and United and JetBlue for a while. <laughs> yeah. I, and by the way, I'm with you on this theory, but uh, I think they've had it for a while. I think it was actually this is my this is a, a complete tinfoil hat theory here, um, but. Um, I think they've had it for a while, and they released it when uh, those Hong Kong protesters, like, shit started getting a little too crazy down there, and they were like, all right, should we test this out and see if we could quell this real quick and get everybody back in their houses? Um, And then I'm with you. I think once it got out, it was like, oh, shit. We didn't expect all this was going to happen. Maybe, yeah. I mean, that's definitely a possibility. Look, uh, China is over there sewing fucking human faces on monkeys and, and murdering igers like they're going out of style. Yeah. So well, I don't understand why, we, why it's, people were so incredulous that China may have do, been involved. Like, uh, wh- what the fuck are you talking about, goddammit? Yeah. Well, of course. Chinese, China's government's horrible. They're yeah, bad, they're, bad, bad people. 
It's crazy over there, and it doesn't mean that Chinese people are intrinsically evil or something. I don't know why that connection was ever made. No, like, not at all. I mean, it's it's even like Iran. The Iranian people are fucking amazing. It's their goddamn yeah. mullahs. Yeah, I mean, honestly, under the uh, the under thirty five crowd in Iran is about eighty percent or so pro West. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Iran in the nineteen sixties looked like Jordan does now, right? They, totally. they, they were, so it was yeah. one of the best countries in the entire goddamn Middle East over there. And all of a sudden, the CIA was like, you know what we should do? Get rid of this democratically elected dude and uh, put in a religious zealot. So yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did that. Yeah. We, so America did that? I've always, I've always said that when, when things, aren't, things aren't stable enough, let's just insert some serious hardcore religion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that has always I worked got out. I got yelled at on Twitter by, um, you know, having a couple of drinks somewhere and uh, someone said something about me and I can be saved with the help of God. I, I said something just, you know, sarcastic, drunk. Yeah, the, the invisible man in the sky is going to help with that. I guess I hate on Twitter. They will hate you for anything on Twitter. Oh, yeah, you can. I mean, look, it's I was I, I keep bringing this up lately because I love this book, but there's a book by Douglas Murray. He's a conservative guy from the U.K. Um, and he he's talking about it's it's called the madness of crowds, basically mob mentality and how it's worked. Oh yeah, totally. That's it's awesome. I gotta read yeah. That one. yeah, it's good. I'll send you uh, I'll send you the, the the name of the book. But it's it's like uh, he's talking about intersectionality. I think I mentioned this the other day, where we we've now decided, I guess, as a culture, to break every human being down into every single one of their traits, and then develop a sophisticated hierarchy of who should be the most offended and by what. And that's just how we're gonna live our lives now. Yeah, yeah. that should work out pretty well, right? That'll be fine. Like, what the fuck are we doing here? You're not going to have time no. to do any of the stuff that actually keeps us alive. No. Why, though? Why? When you can have so much fun doing that. We need to get back to farming. And we <laughs> yeah, can't. We were talking about earlier. Because Bill Gates with, um, with, with, with If you're going to deliver me information, stop worrying about my feelings. Just a fact. Yeah. I can handle it. And I think there's a lot of, a, a lot of success people can handle it that way. Just tell me exactly what's happening. I will tell you exactly what I don't understand. Right. And we're not going to get all whatever about it like not gonna, uh, like offended i can't remember the last time i was offended offended by care. information is that's got to be the yeah. most self-destructive thing that human beings have ever developed the idea of being offended by information like the idea how, that how, men are physically stronger than women yeah they're miserable radical they they i mean you have to be miserable. it's it's like the uh the internet uh thought the fucking ig model uh that is constantly talking about how great her life is her life is not great if it was that great, she would be living her life instead of talking about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how that works. Like, you don't see Adam Sandler on his fucking, uh, on his Instagram, like, oh, my life is so good today. No, he's trying to spend a billion dollars right now. Yeah. And having a pretty good goddamn time at it, I would imagine. <laughs> Jesus he Christ. Does, and you know what's funny, too, as, as, as the opposite of Instagram, too? He doesn't give a fuck what he's wearing. No, he looks like, Boy. Uh, man, he, he looks like every dad, every dad I've ever met. He's wearing he's basketball so awesome shorts. Like yeah. Yeah, you can you can wear anything you want. And when I make when I make kick ass movies, I want my buddy starring with me. Yeah, fuck this, I'm funny. Hey, Adam Sandler just seems I've never met him, but he well, he just seems awesome. Yeah, yeah, he, doesn't really care about too much to be honest with you. He's the type of guy that'll just walk into a finish line and say, "Give me everything in three X," yeah. and then leave. And <laughs> like, are you sure, Adam? You're five foot ten and you weigh 185 or 190 pounds. Are you sure you want everything in three X? He's like. Yeah, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter for him. Um, Hey, one of the weird things you mentioned earlier was about Jeff Bezos, who just stepped down. We did an episode about it last week. Why do you think that is? Um, There's a rumor he's going to buy CNN. Uh, He's going to buy something because um, it just seemed out. It seemed to work conveniently well for we we shut down the government with whom he's in cahoots so we can all use Amazon. You know, it's just a a, I mean, you know, know, we all and we all do whatever. I again, never met the guy. His products and insane. If you can if you can develop a drone that drops other drones to bring me, you know, the, 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 the Hunter Biden, Biden, Hunter Biden porn. Yeah. Horrible joke, bad delivery. But I mean, that's just, that's good. That's good biz right there, mm-hmm. but it's all capitalist. And, and he took advantage. I mean, he didn't take advantage, but they took advantage of the pandemic because right. we're all using Amazon. Right. Um, Amazon prime, you know, we all have an account, but that's good. So though. Is, shouldn't that be something that we just don't have to worry about anymore? Like that it should I, be, but I, I mean, it's, it's also like when Bill Gates used to design viruses, so you had to buy his antivirus. Yeah, you know, shit. McAfee was really guilty. They got, they got caught a couple of times, too, and then he tried to murder somebody or something that went on the run, John McAfee. Yeah, whatever. that gringo doc yeah. on, on uh, Showtime super is weird gnarly. How yeah, that went. Why, why should you have to try to murder someone? You can just do what I do, murder somebody. <laughs> <laughs> how to murder by, uh, it's by Rob O'Neill, <laughs> forward by O.J. Simpson. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, you actually have a book coming out in June, yeah. I believe, right? 
Yeah, we uh, Dakota Meyer and I wrote a book called The Way Forward, and it was a, it was the the process was uh, like we were talking about earlier, Ross, as far as uh, just getting kind of thrown into the public. I'm not thrown in. I mean, it's because of my own actions, but going from from not knowing anyone to to becoming sort of well known. And what to do next. And, and what we noticed, too, especially with the – because he's obviously a combat vet, uh, hardcore Afghanistan stuff, Iraq, Medal of Honor. Um, we noticed that right around the seven-year mark of, um, of combat is, is when it starts to sink in. Of um, The PTSD sinks in. Um, the, the realization of what we were doing isn't quite – isn't normal. Normal people don't do this. Like we used to – you know, we'd go out in Iraq – uh, on a couple of missions, kill 14 people in one night, and then you know debrief and talk about it like it's normal. That's not normal for a human to kill another human. Mm. Um, so, but it's all, it's not just about combat. It's about what do we do now? Like you know, everything you've done up to this point is how you got here. What next? Kind of a thing. So he and I sat down for about a year and a half, wrote that book, and he's just a solid, solid dude. Uh, and he claims, you know, he he claims that he, you know, I just I need a job. I need something to do. I'm like. Well, I did see you flying your helicopter on Instagram the other day, so I think you're doing okay. Yeah, but uh, it's uh, he he does he did, he did, he started doing weird shit like uh, not weird, but he he got his uh, EMT, became a firefighter. Now he's a volunteer firefighter, or some shit. And he's he's doing like ten hour day or uh, twenty four hour days. Yeah, uh, working there like out there cooking up the twenty four burgers, serving the whole crew, like the whole firefighter uh, camaraderie shit. Yeah, but we just want to you know like life goes on. Like a lot of guys in the military, there are guys that did twenty years and then retired at thirty nine. Which is young. I mean, you got a lot of life left yeah. to live, and you got to you got food on the table. Navy, the Marine Corps, the Army are not going to pay uh, your health insurance. They're not going to keep the lights on. You got to figure out how to do it. So it's kind of it's kind of a self help. It's more my first book, The Operator, was just my my life story about a fat kid that ended up in Bin Laden's room because he could do anything with a positive attitude. This one's a little bit more of a spin with some humor, uh, some good jokes and shit. Just some just some some solid solid stories. Good. So the way forward is coming out in June. Yeah, I'm I'm amped for that because um, again, typically after you do something like what you guys did with with Dakota Meyer with the uh, you know the Medal of Honor uh, with you obviously you killed Bin Laden for Christ's sakes. Um, what do you do after that? And then you know a lot of the times uh, you, you get hired for these public speaking gigs, which you were talking about, and um, you're often forced to relive like one of the craziest days oh. of your life over and over and over again. Well, it's one of those things where, you know, I, again, not, not that I care about haters. Like, whenever I hear of cyberbullying, it's like, well, don't read it. It's not That's not a difficult concept, a, a solution. But people always say, uh, well, what, well you, you can't. It's like, I've seen funny memes. Hi, I'm Rob O'Neill, and I can't go. It's been five seconds, as I've mentioned, Bin Laden. And I think that's funny Someone because a lot of meme writers are very creative. But it's like, I, I, I'll tell people if I can sit down with them or talk to them. I was like, all right, say I meet someone for the first time. What's the first fucking thing you think they ask me about? Yeah, first yeah. thing every mm -hmm. time yeah it's all we talk about and it's, i mean like i was i was on uh, tv the other night and they're like well how do we refer to you and i was like can you just call me rob like is that is that is that enough like i don't need, it doesn't need to be all this uh grandiose shit with bin laden like um you know i i'm not famous i just shot a famous guy that's that's all that happened yeah we were you talking about that laura ingram interview the other night yeah 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 it, just uh i mean they, they want to know how to refer to me it's like well you know the and even with this, you know, they say, once a SEAL, always a SEAL. I was like, no, I'm not anymore. I was a SEAL. And, you know, I was in high school. And I'm, in, I, and I'm not in high school anymore. I went to college. I'm not Rob who went to college. I was a Navy SEAL. Now I'm not a Navy SEAL. Right. It's, just that it's just a progression. Yeah, it's so a good, just kind of, you know, walk. That, that's a good way to think about it, too, because uh, you can, you don't have to carry that around as your identity all the time. But it is important that we yeah. share the lessons we've learned because there's nothing. No, I agree with that. The, about the the way we operate as teams and things like that is something that you just can't manufacture without somebody that actually knows what they're doing. You know what I mean? That's and very I, true. That's very why true. I appreciate. Like you got to read that book, Stealing Fire, with Stephen Kotler. We're actually we have him on. We're going to record with him next week. I yeah, think. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of next week, Evan Hafer is going to come up for it because he's big into that cool. uh, mind hacking, biohacking shit, uh, and actually sent logan stark to his uh or to uh one of those places that do like ayahuasca and mdma and shit like that for both for yeah. therapy but it's it's beyond therapy i think we've right now we're just now getting into it uh in the mainstream where people are starting to accept the idea that things like psilocybin and mdma and ayahuasca and various others can be used for therapy and stuff like that but it can also be used yeah. it can also be used to get you in the mindset where you're more open to group flow, right? Which is a really important thing that a lot of people don't understand. But you guys have been doing it for years. You've been doing it without any of these extra things for years. And 
people like Kotler and others have taken your example and then added, basically they've added fuel to the fire to make it way more efficient. And it's, it's something that we're going to see more and more of. It's, 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 it's mind. Oh, I know. Almost. Oh, and we should too, because it used to, you know, it's the old, uh, <clears throat> rub some dirt on it. Yeah. Get over it. Yeah. Type exactly. And now I've done, I've done some of that therapy and it's a life changer. It really is. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's all sorts of different things now. There's the drugs, there's the selling ganglion block. There's all kinds of different things for people now, but I, I, I would encourage people that, uh, that are veterans or people that are just interested in it, look beyond just the therapeutic uh, and, and look into actually unlocking human potential. You know what I mean? There's, I, I won't get too deep into it because we're going to do this show next week, but essentially shutting down your frontal lobe, telling it to shut the fuck up, let your brain operate in exactly the way it's supposed to be able to operate mm-hmm. without all the distractions, right? So you yeah. know how like if you're driving your car and it starts raining really hard, for some reason you could turn your radio down. Why do you do that? Yeah, same as you're looking for a, uh, an address. Yep. You turn your fucking radio down because that direct stimulus to your brain and the frontal lobe is distracting the rest of your brain from doing what it's supposed to do. So your best breakthroughs are going to happen when you, turn, when you turn that frontal lobe off. It doesn't have to be MDMA, NBA or psilocybin to do it. Maybe it's jumping out of airplanes. Maybe it's just having a really good conversation with your friends. Maybe it's meditation or prayer. There's all sorts of different ways to do it, but doing it. Get it, finding out how it works for you is one of the most important things you'll ever do in your life. And recognizing it, too. Like, yeah. uh, when I write, dude, I listen to music really fucking loud. My wife yeah. is always like, dude, I don't understand uh, like, why you're, you're, yeah. you have it up so loud. And I'm like, it's a distraction from me it's, thinking about a blank page and then just yeah. going forward. It's the shower principle, right? Yeah. Some of, a lot of great ideas happen in the shower because you're distracted by, mm-hmm. by manual tasks that are wiping out your frontal lobe's ability to process shit. That's really what it is, is about quieting that part of your brain so the rest of your brain can do what it's really good at. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's super interesting. We'll talk more about it next week with uh, Cotler. For sure. And by the way, we had drinks with uh, your partner um, t- uh, in your, your foundation. Oh, yeah. Greta, yeah. Yeah. Um, t- tell us about yeah. your foundation. Um, we're trying to plan out something cool. We'd love to, to auction something off. Like uh, maybe uh, there's a new soccer team here, the Austin FC. Yeah, Austin yeah. Football Club, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'd love to auction Ooh. off, uh, you know, seeing a game with uh, you and Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. He was on the show a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just talking to, 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 to Lauren Manley today yeah, yeah. about that, and I guess we're setting up something in April. Yeah, yeah. Austin. Yeah. And then I think yeah, they're... I, uh, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get the dates exactly, but I, I uh, she, you guys are kicking them around. But yeah, yeah we're, we'd love to come down there. If we, if, uh, if we can set that up, man, I'll, yeah, I'll totally uh, I'll, I'll block up dates. Right. I mean, if nothing else, we can come down and have some cocktails together and pretend, yeah. you know, Channel for cool guys, right. but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Special Operators Transition Foundation. We were talking earlier about it, just getting special operators into the private sector, uh, bringing the skill set skill sets of uh, combat veterans um, to um, to just different jobs. Like a lot of CEOs, a lot of CFOs have told me that uh, you know any you know anyone can graduate from college right now, but the I don't care what course you took, what skills do you have, and the skills like effective communication, how to lead, how to be led. Um, the biggest one I've heard about, um, combat veterans too, is, um, problem solving. Mm. Like a a boss can go up to an employee and say, here's my problem, (laughs) go to work. And, uh, and they've done it. So yeah, so we're looking to set that up. If we, if we could auction off a a game, man, that would be, that would be awesome. That's a great idea. Yeah. I just mentioned some of the, I I know that Matthew McConaughey was interested. I'm totally interested. If we, we find a time and a date, I'll, I'll, I'll. Yeah, we'll do it right right now. We're just waiting on. MLS to decide when their season's actually going to start and how many fans are actually going to be yeah. in the stands. But so. we're in we're yeah, in right. Texas, so that's not going to be a big deal. But the thing in April, we can probably we'll just go out to Reveille with Tim Kennedy out there, and like there's a camp here nearby that the National Guard kind of does shit at that we can do whatever the fuck we want. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that's we'll, awesome. Yeah, we were we were talking about uh, top one percenters too of people you shouldn't work out with because you die. <laughs> Tim Kennedy. Tim Kennedy's that guy. Like he's yeah. like number one on the list. Of the baddest motherfuckers in the world. He's he's a fucking I goddamn man. It, he he's he's, he's a, a different type that, of human we did, being. We did something in Dallas for uh, for American Sniper. Yep. And um, and um, trying to think who we were there was. So we were watching something, and uh, one of the UFC guys came up. To, one of the former champs, I forget who it was, mm-hmm. and just said to t- about Tim Kennedy. He's like, yeah, he's a that's a bad dude. You don't want to fuck with him. Like if you're in the UFC. And you don't want to fuck with Tim Kennedy. That's something about him. Yeah, you can see how he he loves it so much. Like, uh, if you look at the the pictures he posts posts on the internet, by the way, when he's like when he's doing jujitsu, rolling around with people. Yeah, they take can- they his take. Face. Yeah, you look at his face. He they, you take candid shots of him, and he's smiling the whole time. And if you like, he's like 
doing knife work and he's like licking the knife as he's but he doesn't know he's being filmed i'm like god damn dude this dude really loves combat he has a yeah. zeal uh, for life before was, even, before, even before it was cool he was doing uh like basement uh bare room fights in in, in bars yeah. in new orleans yeah. was he yeah yeah, was, yeah he loves it yeah. and he's good at it he's like and he's you know black belt and jujitsu yeah. just a complete stud yeah uh, but he's also yeah. like one of the sweetest and most thoughtful human beings of all time not that he's not blunt like he will, he will say things to you that make you think, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, but I yeah. always, I always say who loves you, the, the parent who stands by and coddles you and pats you on the head and says, it's going to be okay while you're jamming a fucking fork into an electrical socket or the one that walks by slaps out of your hand and calls you an asshole. Right. Clearly yeah. the person that's yeah. trying to make you better loves you more. Get your feelings out <laughs> of the fucking right. way. Like, with Tim, it's like, uh, everybody's like, yeah, well, normally I'd want to punch this guy in the face, but I don't want to punch this guy in the no, face. No, he's, he's one of the most effective leaders I think I've ever met, to be honest. Yeah, he's incredible. Great, great, great guy. Great guy. Uh, now's the point in the show. We get to the drinking bro of the week. Um, this one was submitted by, I, I don't know if it's Roggle. Um, R-O-G-E-L-L. It's such an interesting name. Rogel, perhaps. Maybe. It does sound kind of French. Uh, Rogel Hamilton Jr. has been a member of Drinking Bros for... Uh, since episode eight, he is nominating the Super Bowl streaker. We've I've gotten tagged in this a million times, so we'll talk about it. He says, um, uh, I'm writing this after a maker's double and four beers. So forgive me for any errors. I want to give a nomination to the Super Bowl streaker, not because of what he did. Streaking is awesome and I enjoy the entertainment of it. But for the bet he made prior, allegedly this guy made a bet uh, for fifty thousand dollars. Yes. Um, at plus seven fifty. Uh, will, will a Super Bowl streaker go across the field? Yes or no. He clearly won and earned every penny and probably doesn't need any of us to buy him a beer for what he did. But, uh, I looked at the uh, return on investment. So to get, to bail yourself out of jail for that is 500 bucks Mm -hmm. and, uh, whatever fine he might have to pay. I think he made like $275,000 on the bet. Yes. Or something like that. So he's, he's, he's ahead. He's, he's ahead. I hope and also story there was another story involved true. where he sent his buddy out first to try to do it so the security would collapse on that guy. Then he ran on. The Brilliant. Track. Yeah. Yes. So they were in it together. Um, we did this on our show maybe three or four years ago yeah. um, where at we said Army at the Army <laughs> Navy game, we said, look, if any of our listeners streak the field during the game. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll give you the, uh, the bailout money and then whatever your court fees and all that yeah. other stuff were. And, uh, wow. and he did. So Jimmy, Jimmy long and um, a ghost bed. Yeah. And a ghost bed. You got a free ghost bed from ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. So we gave him a, a free ghost bed mattress and his brother. I remember when this was going on cause I was in New York, uh, and his brother hit me up on Facebook and he goes, Hey, can you talk? My brother's about to go and streak the army Navy game. And I was like, Oh shit, is this for real? So it was third quarter. And they had set up things in the end zone. Uh, you know, they got seats in the end zone, everything else. And then he made it the full 110 yards. I mean, end zone to end zone, he made it all the way. Um, I will say this, uh, having gone through it and, and personally paid for it myself, um, it was the, the fine itself was about $500. And then his court fees were about 1750 So all out. That's a good uh, deal. Ah, that's what I think. And he and this happened in Florida too. This might not even be a, against the law in Florida. In Tampa I mean, Bay. Who the fuck knows, dude? <laughs> that might just be like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Get out of here, you little rascal. <laughs> hey, what is the um what now what is the deal with streaking? You gotta get end zone to end zone or is there a rule like, I feel like go? that should be the goal, right? It's the goal, but if you watch it, so the, the video that got released of the actual streaker, they tried to clip him around the twenty. So yeah. like I, whoever this was had some speed and agility because the, he did make the first two guys miss, and he was able and to. G- he's juking tackles in a pink g-string. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. So he he did make it in. Yeah, a, but I'm talking like full on too. Like it's a it's a singlet like the Andre the Giant shoe. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like a Borat g-string that he had, which is yeah, very yeah, impressive. Borat, Borat's better one than you know, Andre. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah, R- R- R.I.P. Yeah. yeah. And uh, R.I.P. to Marty Schottenheimer, who died last night, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great coach. Didn't R- have the playoff success we would have expected, but, you know. Browns fans, yeah. Great, great coach. Yeah. Uh, last but not least here, before you get out of here, I- I'd love to talk to you about your hot sauce. Is it sold out? People are asking. Yes, it's sold out, but that means we're making more. <clears throat> it started off as just um, as a, a fun little project because there's a company, I don't know if I can say who they are yet, uh, that heard a, um, a, a rumor about me in at combat. I would carry one of their hot sauces all the time. 
because all we had to look forward to in some places was FaceTime with the kids and meals. Yep. And so we brought this hot sauce around and I've seen like I saw some 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 pie pit and dudes put too much on like a, a hard boiled egg and mm. just it in Florida. Mm-hmm. It's really hot. So uh, I went down there to Kansas City and it went through with some of their chefs and we designed a hot sauce that we thought it would be fun to send out a little gift package to a couple dudes, a couple influencers uh, for Christmas. And um, we posted a couple things, a couple guys getting burned up, like some really tough dudes that, you know, like jujitsu guys, but didn't like hot sauce. It's funny to watch their reactions. And uh, a lot of people are interested in it now because like hot sauce is, is like, um, or like a cult following. Like mm. if you're a hot sauce guy, you're a hot sauce guy. Yeah, yeah. And so a lot of people are interested. So we're going to get this up. Uh, the second batch will be coming out soon. We're going to donate a lot of the, the, the funds to um, my foundation, Special Operators Transition Foundation. Then we're going to start coming out with more. This one that I made might be a little too hot for people, so we're thinking about going with the um, – we're going to go with this one and then a mild and a medium maybe. We'll see. But, yeah, it'll be out soon. I'll be sure to blast it all over social media in between Hunter Biden's dick pics. Hunter <laughs> Biden, I keep screwing that up. Uh, in between – funny videos but yeah it'll be it'll be out soon uh it'll be available at robert j uh it'll be available at a couple of their websites along with the front sword enemy we were talking about um um the way ahead the way forward front toward enemy is something simple like we were talking about in the military this is your problem face the enemy go the, go to the front so it's on a claymore mine obviously yeah and but, is, is yeah. that is that available yeah. on your website yeah robert j and also um I got a ton of my books in, and I'm signing. I'm personalized, personalizing and signing them. Anything you can think of, I will sign on your book. Which has been there's been. I mean, those there are some funny people on the internet. We're getting the, the funniest shit. Like mm. I signed uh, Epstein didn't kill himself. Mm. Uh, I signed uh, uh, Peace Out Bin Laden. So there are some stuff that I I don't I you know I I don't quite say, but uh, get creative. I'll sign a book. I'll get you some hot sauce. I'll get you some front toward enemy and all that other stuff. Nice. And we also made that other shirt. Um, uh, a couple years ago, the New York Times or somebody, maybe uh, someone like them, maybe they don't like us. And they, they wrote an article called the, the War Crimes of SEAL Team 6. And they said what we were doing is we, we would canoe people, um, meaning you kill them, but then you go up to them and you shoot them in the face again to canoe their head, which is bullshit because I'd never waste a round. Like, if, yeah. if anything, I'm going to save one for myself. Yeah. But um, so I made, I made a shirt on my website. It says uh, it looks like a, a camping shirt, like a, a camp you know, summer camp. And it says camp canoe. I love canoeing. It's uh, established 2001. So that you can get that there at Robert J. O'Neill.com. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. And keep in mind folks that we're also going to be doing the charity golf tournament in September in Nashville again. Yep. More details to come on that. Oh yeah. John Daly, John Daly kid rock. When we'll have more and more people there. That was uh, one of the funnest events we've yeah. ever had That's the privilege great. to go to. God yeah. damn it, man. That was uh, we'll one try of the get, best nights ever. We'll try to get Ben, Ch- he li- ben Shapiro lives out there in Nashville. I'll try to get him to come Oh, out hell yeah. It'd be great yeah. to have him out there. That'd be yeah. fun. We, we got a lot more time to set up. That one was kind of a last minute thing because uh, my friend Steve Smith, who owns yeah. the, the uh, Old Hickory Country Club, and he owns uh, like uh, Kid Rock's uh, 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 Honky Tonk, and yeah. he owns uh, Tootsie's. Yeah. It was last minute. I just said, hey, I'm going to bring some stuff to Nashville. Just wanted to tell yeah. you, you know, I don't want to bring business to your um, um, not opponents, but uh, uh, competitors. Right. And he said, "Well, shit, just do it here." And so yeah. we just threw that together the last minute. We had uh, we had uh, b- 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 uh, Randy Hauser was out there. Mm-hmm. Um, Lee Bryce was it Lee Bryce? Lee Bryce, yeah. Lee, also Lee Greenwood. We, yeah, Lee, Lee Greenwood. Greenwood. It was. We got those four dudes on stage playing yeah. with Kid Rock. That was wild. Then, yeah, so we got it got good. And um, that was very surreal. Ross and I were kind of standing there, and all of a sudden we started hearing uh, "Proud to Be an American." Like, what the fuck? And then we I, looked on stage yeah. as Lee Greenwood. I'm like, oh shit! I pulled out a, I did. I, I pulled out the iPhone and I was like, yo, is this going down? I thought it was somebody singing karaoke or something. Yeah. And I walked around the corner and it was actually Lee Greenwood singing that. I got a little yeah, choked yeah. up. Yeah. Well, I remember that too. I was hitting the ball pretty straight till I got to y'all's table, and then we started drinking. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> that, it happens. Yeah. I mean, but you know, it led to good things. Ray got drunk enough to allow John Daly to hit a fucking golf ball out of his mouth, so that's good. How awesome was that shot? Amazing. You know, we got a. A hole, a hole in one, one like, two weeks later, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were out at the at, at the Bonefrog Open yeah. um, here in McBee's Mc, Mc, Mc place in uh, northern yeah. Virginia. Is there a – is there a uh, – Derry Dan over there, do you know of, who's got the most holes in one of all time? Because that was like 14 for him, wasn't it? 14 for him, yeah. Yeah. Like, do you know who has the most? Nobody really goes on record. I think Tiger only has like three. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. I mean, most people just kind of like most they don't can't do it. And John Daly did it barefoot too. You'd have to count. Yeah, and we got that one on video, so we got the full the full swing. 
And I, I believe his response was, shit, did that go in again? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. That dude's the best there is. Uh, Rob, oh, yeah. you, oh. you're, you're one of our favorites, man. We've got to get you a podcast on our network, dude. You're, you're just a fucking right? interesting dude. Yep. Well, let's talk offline about that. That'd be a good idea. Yeah. My, um, my wife and I have been interested because we'll sit here and drink and just talk. And I'm like, shit, I wish someone was recording this because you're yeah. way too hot for me. I'm way too funny for you. <laughs> <laughs> me and my wife have one. It crushes. So, yeah. dude, we, hey, we'd love to do it. Let's let's definitely talk right, offline well, about it. Yeah, uh, go, do it. I'd love to. Go to robertjoneal.com and uh, check out everything. I, dude's got books, shirts, hot sauces coming out. You're, you were even drinking your own beer that's sold out. Uh, before we go, yeah, yes, we sold out of uh, uh, Seawolf Breweries. It's now called Ar- Armed Forces Brewery because we're trying to get a bunch of much more vets in. But mm. this is my brand here. It's called uh, Special Hops. It's an IPA because I'm all about the uh, the ABV type stuff. And uh, look at that! I'm, I'm right on time to finish it. God damn! <laughs> uh, one of the best in the biz, Rob O'Neill yeah. for Anthony D'Anthony Holloway. I'm Ross Patterson. We are the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>